Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where tonight we're going to be playing some more Vampire Therapist. We have cured a patient. Dr. Drain is no longer our, our client. Isabella Deste, as we know, is uh, going to return for at least one more session. But we're going to see Edmund Keane tonight and then Medi, presuming that everything runs in the same pattern that it has done. Let's find out what they've got going on. Looking forward to a night off, boss. I haven't heard from Eddie, so I was thinking about a nice hot bath. An excellent idea. A little oh. self-care goes a long way. Yes, he didn't. He I wasn't intended to come back. If you would like to borrow some. Although I get the sense he probably was going to. Andrew Macos the mighty uses bubble bath, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. There is only one type of human who does not like bubbles. Liars. Well, I was going to say werewolves, but I suppose it is the bath part they dislike, not the bubbles. Mm. Oh well, I ain't no liar. So I'd love some bubble bath. In fact, I. Well, tarnation, I guess the bubble bath is postponed. <laughs> Are you ready to handle Edmund's distortions? It sounds as though they will be intense. Says Edward, but as we know, it's Edmund Keane, isn't it? Well, let me think real quick. Yeah. Okay, a couple of typos here and there. Nothing major, though, is it? So, uh, personalization we've got. I'm going to take catastrophizing and fairness again, just because they're the new ones. Um, I think it does try to use at least one of each kind in each of these interviews. At least that's what it seems like. But let's think about what else he might do. Um, I, I was looking. You know what? I was looking for personalization. <laughs> I just realised it's the auto-picked one. Okay. So what? Are, what? Are, what other ones are these? Um, mine. It's about his critics, isn't it? His audience. Um, I'm going to say maybe overgeneralization. And why don't we take blaming? Let's see if he, see if he does some blaming. I think I got it. I suspect you have difficult work ahead tonight. I wish you the best of luck, Samuel. Thanks, Andy. Hold on, Sammy boy. Here he comes. Um, oh no! Hey, He's the saddest clown! Do you like my costume, Sam? Oh no! Well, well, sure. Did you come right from that production you were talking about last time? I've never seen him look so sad. Yes. I flew right here after the performance. I had to tell you how it went. So, uh, how did it go? You should have been there. You could have seen how the audience reacted. They loved me. Really? Hey, well, that's fantastic, Eddie. I was a little worried when I heard you coming. I wasn't expecting you tonight. But why would you worry? You knew who I was. The great Edmund Keane. Of course the audience would love me. Oh, my dear boy. How they did laugh at the great clown Piero. Are they not supposed to laugh, though? Well, that's amazing, Eddie. Gave that Grimaldi fellow a run for his money, huh? Hmm... Grimaldi would have never achieved as many laughs as I clearly earned. You don't sound too happy about it, Eddie. Piero is supposed to be a tragic yes. clown. That's what I thought. But they <laughs> laughed. <laughs> they just laughed and laughed and laughed. Oh, Eddie. They laughed at my heartbreak when my wife left me for a respectable man. They laughed when I held my dying child in my arms. <laughs> they laughed as I succumbed to drink, damning God for not taking me. They laughed as I slit my own throat, when t'was no trick, for I am already dead. So you see, it was all very, very funny. Eddie, I'm so sorry. That reaction sounds horrifying. No, but of course it wasn't. I believe this role was made for me. It was made so that people could laugh at me. So laugh, my dear boy. Laugh. Gotta be personalization, right? Eddie, I know you're hurting right now. I know people can be cruel, but they ain't looking to be cruel to you in particular. That's one of them cognitive distortions. Personalization. It means... Shut up! Shut up, shut up, shut up! Don't tell me a fucking thing about cognitive distortions! Do you think I don't know what they are? Do you think I do not employ each and every one, every single moment of every single day? I am a professional liar. 
But no lie is so carefully constructed as that of Edmund Keane. You told me to deal with reality as it is. So be it. This is Edmund Keane. A minstrel. A jester. A fool. Labeling? A clown. A clown whose greatest joke is to pretend for even a moment that he is not one. But you see, my dear boy, all that is impressive about Edmund Keane is just illusion. It has always been an illusion. That is what the stage is. But it is my life as well. Go ahead and ask me, therapist. Ask me, who is Edmund Keane? Nay, do not ask. I will tell you. Edmund Keane is nothing. There is no Edmund Keane. I have never met the man, or even the boy. I have known Shylock, Richard III, Hamlet, Lear, Othello, Macbeth, Romeo, Cupid. The people loved all of those characters. Wherefore would they love Edmund? Edmund had to become a character as well. Mm. And I have played Edmund for so long that Feels like a breakthrough. lies beneath. <laughs> a hollow man sits before you. As other vampires have said, what is a man anyway? A miserable pile of secrets. A mountain of pretty lies. Eddie, that ain't true, and I'll tell you why. We all lie, Eddie. Deep down, we're all still scared animals who can't tell the difference between a booing audience and a lion ripping out our throats. For all the time my blood was pumping, I played a tough guy. Slaughtering Sam, they called me. I, I like that name. You want to know why? Why? Because it made me feel safe. Under that grizzled exterior, I was still just a scared little boy. But that little boy was me, Eddie. You understand me. Though we have played different parts, the character underneath is the same, perhaps. Do you remember that I played Cupid as a boy? Well, that was your breakout role, right? I learned that if I smiled and spoke sweetly, people would view me as something other than street trash. I wouldn't have to go hungry. I wouldn't have to be sold to some bloated factory owner. Edmund Keane was worthless to anyone. Another mouth to feed, another body to clothe. So I knew I had to make him disappear. I thought if I suppressed Edmund and became the character the public wanted, I would be rewarded. Uh, there's got to be a fairness fallacy. Now that's a dark contract with the universe, Eddie. Maybe you thought it would be fair for you to get rewarded for playing a character, but there weren't nobody running a cosmic payroll. No, perhaps not. But I was a child. Such complexities were beyond my ken. I only knew that when I wore the nappy and quipped to the audience, they thought me worthy. On the contrary, the Edmund of the Rookeries was beneath contempt. A good, poor child was one who worked, or one who died. Society made that clear. But we gotta move past our child brains, Eddie. Thinking things are gonna be fair might push us down paths we can't escape from. A line from Macbeth comes to mind. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Tis so for me, but this illusion, this character of Edmund Keane, he has brought me to such unspeakable depths. Do you know why I sought to become a vampire? Why I dwelt in dark places until the curse of immortality was given to me? I became a vampire because I was afraid that my son Charles would be a more successful actor than I was. I could not let his legacy overtake mine. I had to be sure that I was the Keen that would be remembered. Dang, it. Insecure. That's a lot. Yes, I have been monstrous. I needed to be the most beloved. I needed my every demand fulfilled. I had my own pet lion. I rode my horse indoors. I flew into a rage if anyone denied me sexual gratification. As an immortal, my fears have made me even more terrible. How many promising young actors I have killed because I felt they threatened my legacy. So many lives cut short because I and I alone know what acting must be. Indeed, the very reason I am wearing these clothes is because I could not bear the idea that Grimaldi brought something to the stage that I could not. Do you see how pathetic I am? I am battling a man who has been dead for almost 200 years. The audience was right. I am a most laughable creature. I know what they are thinking, what they have always thought. Look at the fool actor. Look how he debases himself by begging for our approval. The important thing here to is accept things as they are, compadre. I cannot accept things as they are, my dear boy. How can I? 
How can I accept that I have forced everyone around me to confirm my lie of an existence? How can I accept the people I defiled to satisfy my ego? The son I was relieved Whoa. to see die. The blood I have spilled to sustain my legacy. The lie is all I have and all I know. I have done such evil to protect it. So much is my poverty of spirit. So mighty, and yet with so many defects, in the vapor of my own glory smothered. No, my dear boy, what is done cannot be now amended. The child Edmund is buried, and this grim-visaged, wretched creature is all that remains. Eddie, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. You've done some truly awful stuff, and fear doesn't excuse the dastardly deeds you've done. The shit you've done ain't never going away. Yes, go on, kick me, jeer, laugh at the vicious clown, tell him what a fool he is. You ain't gonna play pity tricks on me or yourself. You acted like a lily-livered some bitch, Eddie. I know that, because I've done some awful shit, too. Because of my fear, I hurt scores of folks, some strangers, some near and dear. And because of my fear, I pushed all that stuff down deep where no one could see it, just like you. I was too afraid to face myself. Once I didn't have a choice but to take a good look at myself, my first thought was that I deserved to go meet the sunrise, because I'm a coward too. But there's something else we've got in common in addition to acting like yellow bellies, Eddie. You know what it is? What is it? We got time, Eddie. We got time to become new people. We got time to look at ourselves honestly and say, yeah, I've been a coward, but I ain't gonna be a coward any longer. So what'll it be, Eddie? You're gonna live forever. Will you do it as a coward or as a man? I don't know how to be a man. So you're giving up then? No, no, I... I cannot maintain the facade any longer. I am revealed to myself. But Sam, I never learned to be a person. I stopped being real at eight years old. Blood! Why did my fellow actors coddle me so? Why did they let me become a monster? They could have said no, but they did not. Sounds like blaming to me. Eddie, you gotta own your choices. Yeah, maybe they could have given you more discipline, but they didn't make you do them things you did. It's time to own up. If you're really gonna stop lying to yourself, it starts right here. What's assigning blame to a bunch of dead folks gonna do for you anyway? But it was at least in part their fault. Who lets a child make the demands I made? We ain't focusing on the people who gave in to a kid who was too big for his britches. We're focusing on you. You did some real awful things. You killed people for criticizing you or for showing talent. You resented your son's success. These are things you gotta take in. But how can I put such things behind me? You don't. You've gotta accept the things you've done as part of who you are. You ain't gonna erase the last 200 some years, but maybe you can use them to make a better Edmund going forward. How? How do I introduce myself as a demanding megalomaniac? How do I introduce myself as a man who was relieved to see his own son die? How do I introduce myself as a man who demanded the entire world get on their knees to satisfy his ego? Well, I wouldn't exactly lead with that stuff. How about you introduce yourself as a man who's figuring himself out? I suppose that is a possibility. At the least, it is not unexpected for me to be so disarrayed. It is known that we actors are all by nature an insecure people. Seems like overgeneralization. No, Eddie. You're overgeneralizing. Painting all actors with a broad brush so it makes you look better. You're blaming your profession and that's a damn cop-out. Yeah, there are some real fatty arbuckles out there. Actors who carve a path of destruction. But there are plenty of stage folk out there who lead humble lives, loving their craft without hurting other people. So I'll thank you not to hide behind bad actors. Bad actors? <laughs> now that is funny. Perhaps I need to find an identity beyond the stage. It protected me in my youth, but I do not think that it serves me any longer. That might be worth exploring, Eddie. But what if I am nothing without the stage? What if I seek other endeavors, but there are none for me? Catastrophizing? You're doing some Nosferatu thinking, Eddie. I've been roaming this earth around the same time as you, and what I picked up is there ain't no extremes. It ain't all or nothing. I guarantee you there's more possibilities out there for you between the grave and the stage. I mean, how long have you even looked for anything beyond the stage? Not at all, I suppose. Then let's hold judgment in reserve, huh? The theater is all I know. It has been my protector all this time. Without it, I am helpless as a swaddling babe. Personalization, maybe? Hang on. 
or catastrophizing again. I was just thinking about personalization because it has been my protector this time, but I think I'm going to go catastrophizing. Eddie, come on. The stage is the thing you know, but you ain't helpless without it. I mean, maybe you're forgetting the whole superhuman strength and immortality thing that comes with being a vampire. And even besides that, you've learned a thing or two from all them Shakespeare plays beyond acting, I'm sure. You ain't a helpless little boy no more. So don't pretend you're powerless to do something new. <laughs> yes. If anything, I certainly have keen powers of self-pity, do I not? <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. However helpless you might feel, Eddie, remember that's just how you feel right now. That's the amazing thing about being undead. We got lots of time to make a better tomorrow. My mentor, Andy, he says that at 200 years old, we're basically toddlers by vampire standards. And we both got a lot of growing up to do. That is a heartening thought. If we're doing life right, Eddie, we're always growing up. The trick is not to think we're done growing. Spoken like the bard himself. As he said, all the world's a stage, and I am barely past mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. I should be of a more mature mind, shouldn't Shit I? Shit statement. Surely 237 years is old enough to be out of nappies. We got time to grow, Eddie. Let's just be glad you're a 200-year-old baby and not a 2,000-year-old baby, huh? We'd be having a real different conversation then. But growth to me seems nigh impossible. I have allowed my fear to guide my every sad-gutted action. My fear told me when I was threatened, which was always... Maybe emotional reasoning? This is what I mean, Eddie. You're always in defensive mode, ready for someone to take you down. That ain't no way to live. When you're afraid of some young actor coming up and making a name for themselves, what's so scary about that anyway? I'm afraid they will erase me. I will be just another child of the rookeries, used and discarded of no value to anyone. No history, no legacy, no record of my existence. Sounds like catastrophizing again. Yeah, I'm glad I picked that one. There's loads of actors out there, all with different kinds of strengths. There's legends from every era. I'm a Buster Keaton fan myself. That filler was one of a kind, just like you were. When he was doing crazy stunts on trains, he weren't no threat to Hamlet. He was very talented. I wanted to kill him, but I never liked visiting America. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you didn't. But you see that his success didn't do anything to yours. Not every threat means your doom. Perhaps my time has passed anyway. There was a time when the stage awaited Edmund Keen, but my death was the end of that time. Probably personalization again, making it all about him. Okay, we got some real work to do still. Here's the thing, Eddie. The stage wasn't waiting for you. Theater wasn't waiting for Edmund Keene to show up, and it wasn't waiting for you to die. You're used to making things about you, but the glorious, wonderful truth is, they ain't. And I got some real good news for you, hombre. You're dead. <laughs> the pressure's off. All them fears are keeping you locked in time. And you can stay there as long as you like, or you can make some progress. What's it going to be? I am too much of a coward to die, so I suppose I must live. I'm glad to hear that. I believe I should go away somewhere, somewhere cold and dark, where I might be alone with my thoughts. I think that's a great idea. I do the same thing, and it changed my life. <laughs> well, my own life. I suppose all's well that ends well. I only hope it does. I got faith in you. As long as we're putting one foot in front of the other, that's progress. I shall see you in a month, then. Okay, so Edmund's coming back as well. Got it, Eddie. Take care of yourself. We'll get you out of that mule and puking stage before you know it, okay? Interesting to see what happens so with Medi. Very well. Exit Edmund Keane. Stage left. Bravo, Samuel. I was taking notes. It seems the student has become the master. Only a master of fumbling around. I knew I was taking a risk there. You were. But perhaps such risks are justified with such an extreme personality. He attempted to gaslight you, but you held fast and challenged him, sternly but fairly. You have a gentle nature. That must have been difficult. I didn't want to drive him off the edge. I just saw him close to making a breakthrough, and I didn't want him to start sinking again. Well, you can now count yourself among a very small number of therapists who have made a breakthrough with such a one. I do not count myself among them. And you let me handle Edmund? I had faith in you, Samuel. You affirmed it magnificently. Now, please, go downstairs and find a friendly neck. You deserve it. A drink sounds mighty nice right about now. You have a good night, Andy. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Oop, something going on with those curtains, then. 
Have a little look at um, Eddie's case notes when we uh, get past the loading screen. Dang, I'm a little shaken up after that one. Let's have a look. That was a rough one. Eddie showed up in his clown suit. Turned out everyone just laughed at him and that triggered something in him. He admits he's been playing a character his whole life. Eddie's done some horrible stuff to protect his own reality bubble. Believes he hasn't really progressed emotionally since he was eight years old. Has been afraid of being himself ever since he was a kid, probably from living on the streets. And he's got a lot of work to do, but like I told him, he's got time to do it. It's going to be real hard, though. Never okay, seen a drink. man as afraid as Edmund Keen. That was tough to watch. I'm sure Crimson can lift my mood. Howdy, Crimson. What's the matter, cowboy? You look a little paler than usual. Oh, just had a real tough session. Watched a man who'd been wearing a mask for 200 years finally take it off, and it weren't pretty. Had to happen, though. The fella's got a long road ahead of him, but at least he's taking his first steps. Think this'll do the trick, then? I call this a bloody cowboy martini. Shaken, not stirred. I'm proud of you, Sam. Starting over is hard, especially when you've been spinning your wheels for a long time. Well, that's the nice thing about being a vampire. We got time to start over. Cheers to that. To rebirth. It seems you walk ever in the path of the Lord, my son. Oh, uh, hey, Kieran. I did not mean to intrude. I noted your discomfort and wish to offer you succor in the kink room. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, Crimson? Not at all. Go drink your fill, cowboy. Come, my son. Now then, I heard you speak of rebirth. Yeah, it's something we vampires have to do a lot of. I was just worried about one of my clients having trouble with their rebirth. I know it is painful, my son. When we are born again, we leave a part of ourselves behind. Like the lizard who sloughs its dead skin, or the mortal who journeys into the mosh pit, we emerge purer than <laughs> before. Sounds like you've got a lot of perspective on this stuff, Kieran. I know you must have questions, my son. Please, ask. Mm -hmm. From your spiritual perspective, can we ever truly start over? My son, you know the answer already. We beings of flesh and blood are also beings of judgment. However, we do not stand in judgment of mortals, but of ourselves. If you believe you have defeated your demons, then you have. Yeah, that's true. Reminds me a lot of should statements. And defeating demons is pretty badass, ain't it? Yes. It is the demons who should fear us, my son. Did you have more questions? Ain't being reborn just rejecting who we were? I wasn't a good guy, Kieran, but I don't want to erase my dark days. My son, only in Christ do we truly receive absolution and become beings of pure light. Our darkness defines us. We cannot reject it, just as we cannot reject the Almighty. It is part of us. But do not be shamed by it, my son. Your darkness is beautiful and unique, as is your journey through the darkness. Kind of sounds like disqualifying the positive to me. Actually, it's liner notes from a metal album I'm fond of. Mm. Did you have more questions to ask? From your spiritual perspective, how do we know when it's time for a rebirth? An hour, a week, a year, a millennium. The answer, my son, is when we are ready. Only the Lord decides when that is. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, and all is according to His will. Well, that sounds like a control fallacy, though. We can't let someone else make our decisions for us. My son, all your trials, the world you live in, they are all His work. He leads you to the truth. When He has prepared you fully, you will accept it, and join him along with the dearly departed gods of metal. Did you have more questions for me, my son? Why ain't your lord the fire and brimstone type that's marked my kind for centuries? <laughs> the lord did not do these things. That is the work of man. Even they work through him and face their own dark journeys. But eventually... We will all be blessed and return to his bosom to rock for all eternity. It is not for man to judge. 
Well, I've got a lady who would love to meet you. I think a few men of the cloth did her dirty. Men will ever seek power. But I know some simply seek blood. Are you ready to receive succor, my son? Yeah, but I really wish you'd stop calling it that. Hmm. <sighs> that is enlightening. <sighs> there. May you be sustained and fulfilled. May you shepherd your lost sheep as I shepherd the children of the night. You're a one-of-a-kind dude, Kieran. But thanks for the drink and the talk. You have a fine night. Godspeed, my son. Good evening, Samuel. You are seeing your ancient client tonight, are you not? Yeah, that's right. I hope she's doing okay. I'm worried about her and that whole algorithm thing. I had a little consultation with some other elder vampires. We have developed a theory, <laughs> though I hope we are wrong. I imagine they probably are. We believe the algorithm is a demon, known to few, named Raziel. Even I have only ever heard whispers of his name. In mythology, he is a fallen angel, believed to have recorded every action, every change of state for all things on this earth, into a great book. <laughs> This book of knowledge he shared with the first mortals. But mortals were not designed to process so much information at once. They made judgments and reinforced behavior based on information they could not understand. Raziel watched as the mortals inevitably used the book to suppress free will, and he was cast down for his terrible mistake. We believe that Raziel has returned. <laughs> Perhaps he believes that with computers, he can attempt to pass infinite knowledge to humanity once more. Terrible things will happen if this comes to pass. I would urge great caution, Samuel. Find out what you can about this algorithm. We may have dark work to do. <laughs> what the hell? Fallen angels? Ancient books of knowledge? What the heck have I walked into? We don't have this kind of shit in America. I am old enough to be mythological myself, Samuel. Myth often contains truth. The important question is how much. We do not know what effect he may have had on Medi, but do not worry. Show her the same compassion you show all your clients, and that will open any doors that can open. All right, I better prepare for this one. It sounds like it might be a doozy. Overgeneralization. Okay, so what else are we going to take for Medi? Um, I'm going to take the two newer ones as well. I'm not sure if the fairness one will apply. It seems that doesn't often come up, but um, yeah, just because it's new, you know. What else? Um, maybe you should. Um, I feel like catastrophizing is kind of, it kind of covers the Nosferatu thing and it almost feels a bit redundant now. Um, blaming, labeling. Mm. I'm going to take control fallacy, I think, for her. Greetings, little mouse. Howdy, Mitty. It's good to see you. How are you feeling tonight? Ah, <sighs> not well, sweetling. Not well at all. Oh no, what's going on? I know you were feeling all stressed about your numbers on that glitch site. They doxed me. Do you know what doxing is, my whiskery friend? It's when mortals find out where you live, where you sleep, so they can hurt you. A group of vampire hunters came looking for me. They were really mean, but they're all dead now much happier but it was very inconvenient now i have to move and it is very difficult to set up my lighting to make me look mm. alive dang Medi, i'm so sorry that sounds awful it's worse i will not be able to use my computer for a week how am i going to upload my content my fans and zealots are all so impatient they're sure to leave me if i don't provide them with their content uh so it's got to be overgeneralization, right? So how many of these followers and zealots have you got, Mitty? Mm, perhaps two million zealots and 90 million followers on Glitch. And how many of them do you think you'll actually lose if you don't upload lots of content? The algorithm has already told me that I will lose millions of followers. So let's go ahead and listen to the algorithm. 
if you lose millions of followers, it ain't anywhere near 90 million. It's doing a bit of overgeneralization and catastrophizing to think they're all gonna leave you high and dry. Uh, heck, maybe the folks who stay are the ones what you can really count on. What you can really count on what? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What? All right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you said what? I was trying to say that the people who don't mind you not uploading so much might be better folk to keep around. It's not up to me, little mice. It's not up to them either. Even the little bloodbags who love me won't get to see me if I don't provide them content. Uh, I don't get it. Why wouldn't they see it? Is the mailman or whatever not delivering your messages? <laughs> You're very funny. No, the algorithm decides who sees my content. If I give it content, it will make people like me more. If I stop feeding it, it shuns me. Mehdi, I gotta say, that doesn't sound like a healthy relationship. Oh, no. It's my friend, I should think. As long as I keep producing content for it, it draws the juicy mortals to me. How many mortals do you need, though, really? Well, if I'm to feel safe, I should like to have more of them always. I gain more followers and zealots every month. I need them. One of them has agreed to let me eat him and I'll take over his flat. They're quite useful. Well, let me ask you something. Do you actually like any of these followers or zealots? Or are they all just food or servants? What a silly question, little mice. Of course I don't like them. I always know what they're like. You forget how old I really am. Overgeneralization again, I guess? Oh, now I gotta challenge you on that, miss. I know you got a lot of followers and zealots or whatever they're called, but that don't mean you know all of them. Now, I'm sure you know a lot about mortals on them websites you're using, but that ain't all mortals, and all mortals ain't them. It's not just them, though. I told you about how they killed me. About how they plucked my eye out. Pop! <laughs> I'm saying, can you know that you're always right about mortals? I wouldn't like to prove that I am. But these mortals, you're talking to them every day. You got all these folks at your beck and call. They're the people you talk to. That's right. But you don't have a real relationship with any of them? Why would I want to have a relationship with my food? You really are quite a silly whiskers. Mehdi, I'm saying the only relationships you've got are with what you're calling your food. But that's what they are. Their food. Mmm, delicious. Delicious food. A food that sometimes does heavy lifting and computer work, but still, food. Well, Mehdi, it sounds like you're in a bit of a codependent relationship with your <clears throat> food. And maybe with this algorithm fella. Oh, but it's not a fellow. And it's not a lady either. So it's non-binary? <clears throat> no, it claims that it is entirely binary. All ones and zeros. They speak very strangely sometimes. Well, whatever they are, it seems like as soon as they showed up, you stopped having any real friends. I wouldn't have time for friends anyway. The algorithm says that I should always provide content to my community, and that takes all night. Should. So why do you think the algorithm has that should? It just knows. It knows everything. Well, let's say that it does know everything. Why does that mean that we should let it tell us what to do? Can it know everything and still make mistakes? That I do not know. That's what I'm trying to say. But well, here's the thing. This algorithm, it might have all the information, but that doesn't mean it's got all the answers. You don't know it like I do. Do you know what I really like about the algorithm, little mice? Unlike the ancient gods the old clans used to worship or the Abrahamic gods that came after, it treats us equally. If we provide content, we will be rewarded. Fairness fallacy. Mehdi, you're saying this thing is fair, but what does fair mean here? You got 90 million followers. You got 2 million zealots willing to kill themselves for you. This thing is tapping itself into the reward center of your brain, but it's giving you a hell of a lot of stress in return. That ain't a fair deal either. I suppose it does change its mind quite often when it decides it likes a new type of content better. Let's talk about these rewards. You say it rewards you with more mortal souls, right? Highly engaged mortal souls, ready to serve me, should I need them. But you said you had souls already back in the pre-social media days, right? 
And you didn't need 90 million of them. That's true. But it does make me feel quite special when the number goes up. Mm -hmm. Is that number going up good for you, though? Not just the stress of managing all them folks, but drawing the attention of vampire hunters. Would you be doing any of this stuff if the algorithm wasn't demanding it? Did ask me to play a game that I did not like very much the other night, and I pretended to enjoy it. It's called Call of Nationalism. <laughs> it's all about men who are proud to be angry, which I find very upsetting. See, that's just what I'm talking about. What about what you want? Did you get to that knitting you wanted to do? No. I had to play the terrible game about insecure manworms. Had to. I'm just thinking, is that control fallacy? I think it probably is. You had to play this call of nationalism? Maybe you ain't helpless here. You could have done a million other things than play this game. You're acting like you got no control here, but dang, come on. You've got the life experience of almost two millennia. Don't act like you're powerless. You're right, little mice. I am very powerful. I just... I don't know what to do. I know that I spend too much time on the internet, but I can't live the life I used to live. I would live out in the wilds again, but there are no wilds any longer. I walk the streets. City folks stare because they sense my true nature. Oh, that's that one I... I never quite got a grip on. It's not emotional reasoning, but it was the one I got around that same time. I will. The experiences I've had with mortals have not been happy ones. My no personalization. Scrabbly clawed, long tailed friend. Well, these mouse descriptions are getting kind of long. You just don't understand what a mouse you are. <laughs> it's the mortal's fault I must lock myself away in my flat. It's the mortal's fault that I have to use the internet to survive. Well, I was going to say that's blaming, but I don't have blame. Um. So maybe overgeneralization? Oh. Maddie has had some part to play in the life she leads, whether okay, she... Okay, so it's control fast. Maddie, you're acting more helpless than you are. You're 1,800 years old. You gotta know there's a heck of a lot of ways to solve a problem, but you're predicting doom based on that perceived lack of control. I mean, heck, at your age, you're probably a billionaire, right? Hmm. Maybe. I think so. <laughs> probably. I don't like to deal with money. Medi, there are mortal billionaires who live in bunkers and do depraved shit even we vampires couldn't imagine. I reckon you could spend a few bucks to be left alone. But also, you're spending a lot of time on mortals you don't like. Would you be very fond of mortals who did this to you? <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't. And I didn't say you should. But you gotta admit, you're giving a lot of time and energy to people you don't like. You're resenting them, and I can't blame you. Of course I resent them. They're all quite awful. Any one of them would hurt me if given the chance. It's going to be overgeneralization. Maybe I gotta say, that's some Nosferatu thinking. <laughs> You've been around a lot longer than me. Long enough to know there's almost nothing that's all good or all bad. I know we both spend a lot of time in nature. And nature has a good way of disavowing us of our more extreme beliefs and overgeneralizations. I suppose that's true. <laughs> I once saw a wolf and a deer having a romantic relationship. Well, at least there was quite a lot of licking involved. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see nothing like that. But maybe I would have if I'd stayed in the wilderness longer. Let me ask you a question. If you're thinking all these followers of yours are a certain way, what have you right? Very frustrating, silly whiskers. You keep telling me that I'm doing cognitive distortions, and then you say they're correct. Well, I'm just wondering about these mortals the algorithm sends your way. What does it say about you that makes them check you out in the first place? Well, I suppose it shows them that I'm pretty. And that I play video games they like. Mm, and they might get to see my body parts. Do they know that you're clever and funny? Do they know that you've got more life experience than they could ever reckon? There's no time to talk about that kind of thing, silly. They scroll past streamers very quickly. I have less than a second to make an impression. That's what the algorithm tells me. So you got all these millions of mortals following you because you're easy on the eyes and like some of the same video games they like? More like easy on the eye. <laughs> she likes oh, popping that okay, thing out, doesn't she? It. But the point is, if the algorithm is sending mortals your way based on good looks and some video games, you ain't getting people who like you for you. You're getting mortals who want content, not Medi. Frankly, it ain't no surprise that you don't have much respect for them. You're very sweet, little mouse. 
but the algorithm knows what mortals want, and it's not me. I, they want my body and my video games. I don't have anything else they want. It's probably disqualifying the positive, which I didn't pick. Don't let this stupid algorithm reduce you to your looks and the games it tells you to play. It's insulting all that you are as a unique individual. I understand what you're trying to say, Willy <laughs> Whiskers McMouse Face the Third, but you don't know the algorithm as I do. It doesn't insult anyone. It just collects all the information about everyone and everything, recognizes patterns, and shows me what those patterns are. What it decides is important is based on the thoughts of every human who has ever been online. It truly knows the will of mortals because it knows all mortals. That's got to be overgeneralization again. <laughs> what it's doing is overgeneralizing, Mehdi. How the heck can all of humanity be reduced to formulas? It can't. So what's it doing? It's shaping humanity by reinforcing what folks are already paying attention to. It's telling you to play Call of Nationalism and rely on sex appeal. It's telling the mortals to only care about them things that are popular already. Don't explore. Don't appreciate things that are weird and unique. If this algorithm gets what it wants, what'll happen? Earth will be the most boring place in the universe. Mehdi, this algorithm doesn't appreciate you, and it's teaching you not to appreciate yourself. You're right, little mice. Oh, I am forgetting myself. I just... I think I don't want to feel lonely anymore. I want to be liked. You ain't gonna be happy if you're being liked for being some boring idea of what someone else thinks you should be. I really have been very silly, haven't I? The algorithm isn't nice at all, I think. I'm glad you're getting that this algorithm is abusing you. I don't want to see it change what makes you special. But I won't have anyone. I'll be alone. Hmm. Challenger. You were alone already, Mehdi. These relationships you've got online with all these faceless mortals, they ain't real. Those friends you had a few years ago, they sounded real. I suppose I could send them all an email. Do you think they'll remember me? There was something about you all that made you join that web ring or whatever it was called. I don't know, but I bet they'd be happy to hear from you. I think I will send them a message. They were all very strange, like me. We're all strange, Mitty. We're all individuals. Maybe they were just your kind of strange. You are very sweet, little mouse. I could give you some of my zealots if you like. They'll do what I tell them to do. Well, that's okay. I'm happy letting them live their lives freely. They deserve to find out what they actually like, too. You are very soft and squishy for a vampire. But I will message my old friends. And if you're going to do this streaming thing, try streaming things you honestly enjoy. Make a new account. Be yourself and see who shows up. I think I will do that. I'll keep my only zealots, though. They can be very useful. <laughs> you do what's best for you. And don't let anyone but you make that decision. You are so very sweet. Are you sure I can't take you home and let you run on a wheel all night? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'll see you next month then, right? I want to hear all about how you're handling your weird self. <laughs> But you are a very, very naughty mouse with a very dirty mouse mind. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it like that. I... <laughs> you are very funny. I will see you in a month then. Now I shall become a Excellent yep. work, Samuel. <laughs> we cannot know for sure, but I believe Medi understands the source of her discomfort. Do you think this Raziel is going to get upset at losing her? If I understand correctly, Raziel has no power if he is ignored, but he is unusually tempting to listen to. It sounds as though he has the mortals quite beguiled, and many of our kin as well. But you give me faith that he can be defeated, one individual at a time if need be. I ain't never defeated a dark god before. There is a first time for everything, my dear Samuel. After all, haven't you been dancing? <laughs> you really gotta bring that up, huh? <laughs> Mostly for the reaction. Now, my friend, make sure you get something to drink. You shall not have trouble finding willing necks, I am sure. You are becoming quite the celebrity at Immernacht. Beating fallen angels is thirsty work. I'm ready for a drink. Slake your thirst then, my friend. Rest in peace. There we go. Okay. Have a quick look at Medi's case notes for session four. Funny to think vampires being born now are growing up with the internet. 
We're gonna have to reckon with that someday. Don't even. <laughs> I think we had a breakthrough today. Seems Medi's overgeneralizations and the algorithm's overgeneralizations were a deadly combination. Medi's assumptions about mortals were being confirmed by the algorithm, not reality. She was letting the algorithm determine what value humanity saw in her. She realizes the algorithm was making her into a boring person. I think Medi gets what the internet's been doing to her. She's going to get in touch with some old friends, and I think that's a great idea. Hmm. I hope Medi's realized that being herself is the best person she can be. Well, speaking of which, I should go check on Crimson. Hey, Crimson, what's on tap tonight? Take a look around, cowboy. There's plenty to drink. Well, maybe I'll go looking for a donor. Just figured I'd say howdy to my pal Crimson first. Well, howdy, sharpshooter. You look like you're in a good mood tonight. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. You know that ancient client I told you about? I think she's finally realizing that some people are going to appreciate her for being who she is. Maybe she ain't gonna have a hundred million fans, but the people who genuinely like her will be there for her. How's your blood sugar, honey? I think <laughs> you're a little too sweet. Oh, come on now. I've been thinking a lot about exactly what you're saying. Folks in D.C. didn't much like my style, but I'm not sure why I cared. I don't beat yourself up over it. I think we all do the same thing. Easier to do what other folk are doing than blaze a trail, right? I'm not sure it is easier if we're fighting ourselves the whole time. Uh, that's some real wisdom right there. Anyway, thanks for making me think. I think I'm done spinning my wheels. Excuse me, I wish to speak with you, vampire, in the kink room. <laughs> uh, I think my dinner's calling. I'll see you later, Crimson. Ciao, Tex. You know, I have seen what you are doing. I see all. So you mentioned Panoptabella. And what am I doing? I see that you change people. You make them stronger, more confident, more comfortable. I'm pretty sure they're doing all that themselves. No, that is not what I see. I see that without you, they repeat their actions over and over again. Usually, I can see the future because people repeat themselves. But you make the future uncertain. I do not like what I cannot see. Well, why do you need to see everything anyway, Panoptabella? Ain't it exhausting? To see all is to see danger and avoid it. I see that you wish to say something, but are holding back. Well, I try to do my therapy stuff just in therapy. It ain't right to be analyzing folk without their consent. Then consent is given. To see all is to see danger and avoid it. Well, see, what that is, is a control fallacy. It's a kind of cognitive distortion. The future's always got elements we can't count on. You can be prepared to a certain extent, but you ain't ever gonna know everything. You can only see what's in front of you, after all. Interesting. Then what do you believe I should do? Well, just that. See what's in front of you. See how you feel about right now, not yesterday or tomorrow. Right now, you can see. I see. Yes, I see that. I would like you to drink from my neck right now. <laughs> see, that wasn't so hard. <sighs> I see more clearly, vampire. I thank you. And I thank you for the blood. I hope your torpor is most satisfying. I shall see myself out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good night, Panoptabella. I think that was a pretty successful night. Coffin time for old Sam. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Cool. And it looks like we're going into <laughs> our own session, huh? Of mental health himself. Good evening, Samuel. So I'm just going to say thanks very much for watching. We're going to leave it there for now. We're going to come back um, one client down, but into the new month with three more to deal with. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could hit that thumbs up button, that's always appreciated. Be sure to leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you thought about tonight's events. And if you're watching this and haven't yet subscribed to the channel, it would be amazing if you could. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.